I'm Amy Moore from Gibson Institute of Cognitive Research in Colorado Springs. I'm excited to tell you about our study, Clinician Delivered Cognitive Training for Children with Attention Problems, Effects on Cognition and Behavior from the ThinkRx Randomized Control Trial. The purpose of our study was to examine quantitative and qualitative outcomes of ThinkRx cognitive training with children ages 8 to 14 who have attention problems or ADHD. Using a randomized controlled trial design, we compared the results from a group of children who completed 60 hours of one-on-one -on -one cognitive training with a treatment-as-usual control group. Treatment group participants attended 40 90-minute training sessions where they engaged in rigorous mental tasks with a cognitive trainer. The tasks were designed to remediate working memory, long-term memory, processing speed, visual processing, auditory processing, logic and reasoning, and attention skills. The training tasks were sequenced in difficulty and complexity and were delivered with a metronome or a timer to increase intensity. There are a couple of unique features to the ThinkRx training program that set it apart from other cognitive training interventions. First, the intervention is delivered by a clinician rather than a computer. The dynamic feedback, encouragement, coaching, and social interaction are key components of increasing motivation and progress through the levels. Part of each training session is spent reviewing the child's goals and how to apply new skills outside of the training environment. Second, the clinician adds deliberate distractions and trains participants in a loud and busy space. A metronome is used in most tasks to train divided attention. Clinicians try to distract the child during a task by walking around him, making funny faces or sounds, singing a song, clapping to a different beat than the metronome, or saying the wrong answers while the child is responding. The use of deliberate distractions is designed to mimic the real world, where children with attention problems or ADHD are inundated by distractions and external stimuli. In the clinic, they must adapt to training amidst the noise of multiple conversations, ticking metronomes, and buzzing timers. This is a departure from the common practice of removing distractions for children with attention problems. By training children with ADHD amidst distractions, they learn to tune them out and focus on more relevant tasks. In the current study, our results showed statistically significant differences between the two groups on five outcome measures. Also, all treatment group participants obtained clinically significant change on the composite IQ score, indicating overall recovery effects from the intervention. Finally, thematic analysis of parent-reported behavioral changes revealed improvement in confidence, self-discipline, and cooperative behaviors. In future research, we will examine outcomes on clinical ADHD measures with a larger sample, 